Happy New Year and welcome to the first Live Lounge of 2021. Today we'll be reflecting on everything that happened in 2020, the good, the bad and the ugly. So let's start our time together by singing Bless the Lord, O My Soul, which reminds us no matter what we've been through or what we might face, God is still the same and still deserves our praise.
Here's Bill and Margaret with today's readings. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Ali will now lead us in a time of prayer and reflection. Good morning. The beginning of a new year is often a time when we look back and reflect on all that has happened over the last year, both generally and in our own personal journeys. 2020 has been a year like no other in all our lifetimes and has touched each and every one of us in different ways and indeed continues to do so. Unprecedented has been one of the many words bandied around over this last year and the pandemic, although not the only significant event of 2020, has brought about many changes, uncertainties, challenges, pain and loss. There have however been many positives and good news stories. It has helped us to see things differently and perhaps encouraged us to re-evaluate what is important and shift some of our priorities. It has also encouraged acts of kindness, love and support. It has become part of our history, who we are and will have shaped us as we move forward into 2021. I recall a picture a friend shared once when we were praying together of the unique tapestries of our lives made up of who we are, what we do, the people we share it with and the experiences that we have, each telling its own unique story and then God weaving threads of pure gold in and throughout it, which brought it to life and made it even more beautiful. It's as we give ourselves all we are, all we do, and all that we experience, that God creates something beautiful, which then reflects his beauty, his love, grace and mercy, and his glory. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, as we look back over the last year, we thank you that in all things you have been with us every step of the way, even though there have been times when we have not been aware of it. We thank you for your love and your faithfulness, for your comfort and strength, and for sustaining us day by day. We acknowledge that it has been really hard at times, and it continues to be so for so many of us. And we pray particularly for those who continue to carry the burdens of pain and loss as well as those who have concerns for the future going forward. We pray for your comfort, your strength, and for your healing and provision. We thank you for all your rich blessings over the last year and for your goodness, for the beauty of your creation, and for the love, friendship, kindness, and support of others. Bless them, Lord. We thank you too for the gift of science and for the ability to so quickly develop an effective and safe vaccine. And we pray for an expedition of its rollout, both here and around the world. We continue to pray for all our leaders and for those in positions of authority. Give them godly wisdom and understanding and, able, and, and enable them to make the right decisions. We pray too, Lord, for unity and cooperation. As we move into another lockdown, help us all to play our part. 
And as we do so, we pray that the numbers affected will drop significantly. May we know your leading and guiding and your provision day by day as we look to and trust in you. And I'd just like to finish with the words from Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. He will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Lord, we declare that you are our way maker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper and our light in the darkness. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Normally, at the beginning of a new year, we take time to reflect on the year that has just passed. I think we can all agree 2020 was like no other year we've ever experienced. It was a year that no one was expecting. If this time last year you had told me I would only be able to see a limited number of people for one day to celebrate Christmas, I would have told you that you were out of your mind. If someone had told me the normal New Year's celebrations were cancelled, I wouldn't have believed them. But that's not all that changed this year. Holidays were booked, rebooked and rebooked again. Weddings were postponed or went ahead with limited guests. Hobbies and social activities had to be put on hold. Live music, theatre, comedy and lots of other types of live entertainment had to be cancelled or live streamed instead. Live sport was cancelled and is now played without any fans watching. The latest blockbuster releases were in our living rooms rather than at the cinema. The doors to our places of worship have remained closed. Businesses have closed people have lost their jobs. But if we were to focus only on the things we've lost over the last 12 months due to the pandemic, we would miss all the amazing things that have also happened. We've seen people step up and do amazing things for others, like Sir Captain Tom Moore who raised over £32 million for the NHS, like nine-year-old Freddie Zavi who raised £34,000 for the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital where his school friend was receiving treatment for leukaemia like Marcus Rashford, who took it on himself to champion the plight of many who rely on free school meals. Like Zane Powells, the deputy head teacher at Western Primary School in Grimsby, who walked five miles every day to make sure 78 of his school students got their free school meals. Like all of the emergency services and NHS staff that have kept us safe. The supermarket staff and shopkeepers who have kept us fed and supplied with toilet rolls. The teachers and support workers who have been there for our children encouraging and supporting them. The bin men who have collected our rubbish, the postal workers and delivery drivers that have made sure we get our Amazon Prime deliveries and other posts. Public transport staff who have helped us get to work and everyone else who has kept this country running. And like the numerous local volunteers all across the country who have provided vital services in our local community by collecting prescriptions, shopping for others that are sheltering and visiting those in need. Not only that, we've seen a hugely positive impact on our environment. Many people during the first lockdown remarked how they'd noticed that the birds seem to have come back. Different parts of the world have recorded improvements in air and water quality, and there has been a drop in greenhouse gases and noise pollution. And on a personal level, many of us have discovered new hobbies that have helped us relax and unwind. We challenged ourselves by learning new skills. Parks, country trails, the woods and the grey outdoors became our new favourite places to go and escape for a few hours. We ran, cycled, hiked and did PE with Joe to keep fit. Our living rooms and dining room tables became classrooms and offices. We enjoyed an unseasonably sunny and hot spring that felt like it lasted forever. We learned to value relationships more than maybe we have done for a long time and found new ways of connecting through social media and video calls. And we started to focus on those things that are really important to us and what truly matters. When the first national lockdown was announced back in March, I thought it was going to be all pain and no joy, and that the year was going to be a write-off, but I couldn't have been more wrong. 2020 has not been a kind year. It's been a year that preyed on the weak and the sick, a year that claimed lives and tested trust, a year filled with division, 
and upended by chaos. It's been a year dominated by staggering loss of life across the world. But it's a world still filled with courage, compassion, and heart. Pandemics occur. They have always occurred and they will occur. It would be really shameful if we don't learn from what we've been through. Amidst tragedy, we learn that we know how to put others before ourselves. Despite resistance, despite pushback, we persisted. This is a world of resilience, a world propelled by the belief that overcoming the impossible is in fact possible. With the inspiration of innovation, we were once again reminded that nothing is out of reach and that we should shoot for the stars. Faced with the kind of viral enemy the world hasn't known for generations, we witnessed every day the true meaning of what it is to be a hero. Society reckoned with inequality and people took to the streets and used their ballots to make their voices heard. Let's stop thinking that our voice don't matter. That's right. And vote. Heroes have walked among us and will again. Records were shattered and barriers were broken. While I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. We imagine a tomorrow filled with unity, not division. A tomorrow that delivers equality, long overdue. A tomorrow galvanized to tackle the world's great challenges. 2020 upended norms and our understanding of normal. It was a year no one could predict. But we've endured hard years before. We've endured tragedy before. And we emerge from those years stronger, wiser, better. And so it will be with this year, too. When we look back on 2020, we not only need to remember those things we missed out on and those we have lost, we also need to celebrate the good times and everything we've gained, which we wouldn't have otherwise. In our first reading this morning, the Psalmist King David encourages us to praise the Lord and forget not all his benefits. And if anyone knew what it was like to go through challenging times with huge ups and downs, it was David. He may have written this when he was king, but his journey to the throne wasn't an easy one. But in all that time, he never forgot who was directing his steps. He never stopped worshipping God. He never forgot who the real king was. When we're in the midst of our struggles, it's often hard to have a true perspective on things. The mountain always seems bigger when we're close up to it. We often find it difficult to find God in all the pain and suffering. But the words of a well-known poem put it better than I ever could. One night, I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, Across the skies flash scenes from my life. For each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. As the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never ever during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. My prayer for you going into 2021 is that you'll be able to recognise that God has been there with you throughout 2020. He has been for you, and when you weren't able to walk yourself, he was carrying you. So whatever this current lockdown and year may bring, remember that God is still there with you. He is by your side. He wants the best for you, and he loves you. He hasn't changed since the time of King David. He's stable and dependable. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe that God is calling us to return to our roots, to be a church which is Christ-centred and Jesus-shaped, to be a church of missionary disciples, to be a church which is a church of the networks as well as the neighbourhoods, to be a church which is younger and more diverse, but most of all, 
a church which is centred on Christ, a church which is shaped by Jesus' life and Jesus' priorities and by the five marks of mission, a church which is humbler, simpler, bolder in its living and sharing of the gospel of Christ. Thank you, Matt. Let's finish our time together by singing Voice of Hope, as there are still reasons for us to praise and worship God no matter what we're going through. Please join us again next week for another Live Lounge where we'll be looking at the future. We hope you have a great week and God bless. Bye.